there you go, there's the good lighting. What is up guys, my name is Mark Santamaria, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the RC Vlog. Guys, today we're going to do some more upgrades on the Traxxas Ledge. A couple of upgrades that I've been wanting to do, one of them that I know we should do, and I said it right when I saw the car, and it cost less than $10, but before we do, I did pick up the Stampede out of the storage unit because I got to congratulate Mr. Hector, one of my Patreons, he won the Patreon contest this month, and the contest was essentially naming the pink stampede this pink stampede to make sure i knew it went to a good home i wanted to hear what they were going to name it and the name for this pink stampede is going to be stam pinky that is the winner of the contest so hector congratulations i'm shipping this out now as soon as i get your address but thanks a lot thanks for all the patreons for the support you guys are freaking awesome also if you haven't noticed yet i'm wearing the msm camp t-shirts the msm camp information and signups will be available on the msm vlog site really really soon if not already i will put a link in description go check it out there's only going to be 30 spots total 15 for our trx4 sport camp and then 15 for our slash camp we had a blast last year i'm super excited about this year it's going to be better this year way more fun actually i can't say way more fun because last year was super fun too but oh man there's an oh man i know you guys are doing oh man counts it's going to be awesome All right guys, here is my sledge. I put the beautiful green chassis brace. Oh, look at it. I had to put the, where the Traxxas was up. Oh, it looks so good with the blue and green arms. You know what? I'm coming around on the, the I mean, I've always really liked the colors, but maybe I don't care if it looks toyish. It does make it a little toyish looking, but man, it's freaking awesome. So the first upgrade we're gonna do to this thing today is yes, it's under 10 bucks. And I think it's much needed and it's, these guys right here these are droop screws so techno makes really good droop screws or the perfect droop screws for these at least what it appears to be perfect droop screws for these arms and essentially what the droop does is droop is the amount of travel your arm can go down these droop screws limit how far the arm can travel down the reason why that's important is i've actually already stretched a shock bottom like one of the shock bottoms that go on the bottom of the shock shaft i've stretched it out because when you wreck and it pulls down on this arm really bad it can actually stretch it out because the, the arm can move down. Well, with droop screws, it keeps it from actually traveling down any further. So it sits on the droop screw instead of puts pressure on the shock cap or the shock bottom. So to put these droop screws on, I do have to take the arms off and then I have to drill them in through the bottom. And then the reason why these droop screws are so special, and I'll show you real quick, is there is a two millimeter hole or a, a spot for a two millimeter hex driver on the end so basically you can put it in like that oh whoa and you can set the droop like that which will be really cool so i gotta take these arms off drill these droop screws in ideally this shouldn't take too long because i can just take these front screws off put the droop screws in and then we can limit the droop i'll show you how to set the droop after you install it All right, so we're just gonna screw. Basically, I just gotta get the arm out enough to get to this hole right here inside the arm. You actually see the indention for the droop screw also. Then you just screw it in there. By the way, the part number is that right there. TKR 1238, is that what that is? That's the only thing that sucks about these colored arms is they get dirty real fast. Golly. Okay, I have the droop screws installed. So what we're gonna do now is set the droop to max droop. What max droop is, is the maximum amount of travel before it actually hits the droop screw. So the way you do that, I'm actually using a ball, 2.0 ball driver. You're gonna get to the droop screw and because there's a screw hole on top, I'm basically gonna back this screw out. And you can actually see the arm move down until it stops. And then I'm gonna screw the screw in until you see the arm slightly move up. There it goes. It's slightly moved up there. So once you have that one side set where it's slightly moved up, that means now it's sitting on the droop screw. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna 
basically set the other side exactly the same. So the way you should, the, the best way to set it exactly the same is to get a digital caliper. You know what? I'll show you guys the right way. Let me go grab my digital calipers real quick. I lied. I forgot I have a droop, a droop gauge. This is the VRP droop gauge. These things are really cool. But essentially what you want to do is you want to measure the distance between the shock standoff and the shock bottom. So, so what I'm going to try to do here is basically what you want is you just want them both to be the exact same side. So I set this side to max droop. Again, I backed it out. I started screwing in the droop screw until I saw the arm slightly move up, meaning the droop screw is sitting on the chassis. This is set to max droop and it's sitting right. I said 119, but I could go a little bit further. So it's sitting at 121. This side is sitting at 126. So basically we're just gonna keep screwing this thing in until we get to 121. Both front shocks are set to 121. That means the droop is exactly the same. And you can tell whenever you set it down slowly, this is kind of a, a lame way or a not so technical way of checking it. Basically whenever you set it down slowly, you want both sides to touch at the same time. So now we got both front droop screws being utilized because they are limiting the shock travel and the arm travel. Then we just got to do the same with the rear. All right, so the droop screws are in. I actually went back and forth and setting the droop, making sure it was set right. I, I went more to a 124, so 124 millimeter droop in the front and then max droop in the rear. Feels pretty good. It's sitting on the droop screws and everything looks great. All right, so let's pull the servo out of this. Actually, before we pull the servo out of this thing, I'm gonna put wheels and tires on it, battery in it, and we're gonna see how slow the steering is now before the change. That way we can compare it after the change. Oh man, this is gonna be so much fun. All right, here is the stock steering. I mean, it's not awful, but it is slow. So that's stock. I really am excited to see the improvement after we put the new 700 ounce Nitro Pro servo in there. So this is the servo that we're gonna put in it. This is the 700, the FK N700 Pro by Nitro Pro. I picked some of these up at Psycho Nitro Blast recently and it's 700 ounces. So these are the eight, the eight at 8.4 volts, it's 708 ounces at 0.11 seconds. At 6.0 volts, which is what this is gonna be run at because that's the BEC of the sledge, 6.0, is 0 0.15 at 528 ounces. So that's huge, That's those are big numbers. The other option I was gonna put in the truck was this one, the Traxxas 400. I think this would have been just fine because this is what's actually in my X-Max. However, because we got these and I wanna try them, we're gonna throw this in here. So some of my concerns before putting the servo in is how long the servo wire is. Full disclosure, this is not a paid product placement. Nitro Pro is not paying me to do this, nor are they giving me the servo to put in there. I just saw these. The guy seemed really cool, the guy who ran the company. I wanna support his company, so I'll pick some up. So the servo lead looks pretty long. These are beautiful servos, my goodness. Look at how pretty these are. Metal case, metal all the way around. Here it is. Oh man, that is a beautiful, beautiful servo on the back. Let's see how long the lead is because on the sledge, it's gonna have to run pretty far. Ooh, that's gonna be kind of close. It's okay, I have a servo extension, but here's the servo. This is what we're gonna put in there. Looks like it comes with some servo ear grommets, which you don't really need because these are metal metal servo ears uh, no metal servo horn but it's okay because the sledge already has one so i haven't replaced a servo on a sledge yet i'm going to assume that i have to take this battery tray out because it looks like the you can't really see it but it looks like the servo mount is integrated with the battery tray and you can see that the wires run under the battery tray so let me take this out real quick see how this goes All right, the battery tray's out, but I think I need to take the servo, maybe this receiver tray out? Receiver box tray? I think we do. Golly, this thing's huge. Clipping everything over here. Chill up a little bit higher so y'all can see. Okay, I got the receiver box out. So here's the bottom of the receiver. Oh, you can't really see that. There you go, sorry. Here's the bottom of the receiver box. So essentially what happens is your servo wires run out of here and into this little groove that then leads under the drive shaft, which is nice. That means that servo wire won't get caught up under the drive shaft. 
So yeah, I just got to do that routing. And then under the radio tray, or the battery tray, looks like this, where your servo wire runs. So that is a pretty long servo wire. That's about how long I need it. Okay, here's the Nitro Pro servo. Here is the Traxxas stock servo. So as you can see, the lead is way longer. Luckily, I have ProTech extensions ready to go. I'll put a link in the description for both the servo and the extension. But I'm going to put this extension on and then I'm going to put some heat shrink over the connector. That way it doesn't come undone. And then I'm just going to put this thing in here. I'm not going to bore you guys with the install because it's pretty straightforward. And then we'll see how this thing functions. Okay, we have a situation. So here is the connector. So this is what basically extends the servo wire. That way it can make it to the receiver box. However, where the wire will run is in this channel here. And this big piece won't fit in that channel so my options are to bundle this thing up and get a longer servo extension which i don't even know if i have a longer servo extension or cut the radio tray all right i got it in there i would be lying through my teeth if i told you that was an easy task and i'll show you why in a second but there is the speed this is one-handed but there is the speed of the new servo Servo's very, very quiet, very, very clean, love it. It's definitely faster, it's got plenty of torque. Oh man, that looks, that's pretty awesome. I can't really, I mean, I can tell it's faster, but I guess, I bet the side-by-side -side video, which I'll put up here so you guys can see, is a significant difference here, let's see. There you go. All right, so let me show you why it was a complete nightmare. I showed you the wiring, how it wouldn't it wouldn't work. I just got a, a longer extension. I didn't end up dremeling out the bottom of the radio tray. I got a longer extension, and you can kind of see in there, I'm gonna try to zoom in, but basically what I did was I just put a zip tie. I basically just bunched the wire up on that little bridge that goes under the drive shaft, and then I zip tied it in there. So it's not, it is running through the little channel however it's a super long extension so the connector part connects before it actually goes in that channel that will make sense whenever you start doing this conversion or you change out the servo but yeah it, it took a little bit of testing i ended up putting the the connector with the zip tie on the wrong side i had to switch it out the other way it was kind of a pain to keep all the wires in and get it all stuffed back in the radio box but it's done and man steering is definitely faster so I just got done driving the beast up and down my street, just kind of ripping around in the yards. And I'm not gonna lie, it's noticeable already. Like it reacts to the counter steer a lot better. It's a lot easier to counter steer and correct whenever your, your car over rotates. I definitely, I definitely see the difference. And man, it's got plenty, plenty of torque, a lot of torque. I think it changed it. I like it, I like it a lot. Well, I hope you liked this video, guys. If you did, smash the like button, subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification bell, and you guys will see me next time. I'll put a link in the description below for everything I use today, including my tools. So thanks for the support, guys. See you next time. Later, guys.